All right, so in this lesson, I'm going to talk about how do we correctly run our app in Flutter using the emulator or using virtual or real devices. OK, so let me actually open my project right here. And also, I already have my emulator runs uh, and up and running. All right, so in order to see this everything clearly, so one good thing you can do also on your computer is I'm going to reset the, the window a little bit. I'm going to bring my window to here, all right, and then put the emulator to the right so that you can always see the changes, right? Okay, so right here. Okay, so I already ran my app, okay? So, but I wanna talk a little bit more about exactly how you run your app. What are the options you will run to try to run the app? All right, so now, first of all, most of the time when you're running the app, you're gonna go here, click on the green button. Now, make sure you have your devices set up first, okay? If you don't have a virtual device or if you don't have a real device, you cannot run this button here. Okay, make sure everything shows up here uh, that the IDE knows there is a device connected and then you can click on this button here to run it. All right, and then once it's done and then you will see this app right here. All right, so that's how you can run it. Now, um, before we talk more, I can you know show you a very quick changes. Okay, so we haven't go through the code, but then if you look at the code um, briefly and there are certain things are pretty easy to figure out. So if you scroll down right here and you kind of start to see some of the text here. So it says that you have pushed the button this many times and there's a counter variable, right? But that's actually exactly how we implement this part because you have this label here to say you have pushed this button this many times. So if I ever change this one, okay, I change this one, you have pushed the button. I'm going to change it to you have click the button this many times, right? So once I done that, I'm going to click on this button to run it. And then just a few seconds. All right, so this one has been updated. You have clicked the button this many times. So that's basically how you can debug, all right? So you change some of the code and then you run it and then you see the device and then make sure everything's right. Okay, so it's a very common practice. All right, but I wanna talk about there are different ways to run the app, okay? Now, in general, okay, so there is a, a very preferred way, a very popular way to run the app, okay? It's something called a hot load, all right? So this button is right here, and this yellow button is a little like a lightning button. All right, so it shows this very fast, right? So if you uh, put, put your mouse here, it says further hot loaded, right? So this one here is how you um, can quickly adapt the changes. Okay, so let me show you that, right? So for example, let me change this again. You have clicked on this button this many times, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll just change it back. You have pushed the button this many times. All right, I'm gonna add some other things. All right, just make some extra changes, okay? So right now I haven't run it, but this time I'm gonna click on this hot load button right here, okay? I'm gonna do this one here. All right, as you can see the moment I click on the button, this one has been updated. All right, so it's almost instant. So that is called hot load, right? So this is a, actually a very um, new technique, okay? In the past, I was saying, you know, five years ago, four years ago, in mobile development, you don't have this kind of feature. Every time when you change something, you actually have to rebuild and rerun everything, all right? And then later on, Android did bring you this feature, um, and then, but it was a little bit buggy. I, I'm sure right now it's doing a lot better. Now Flutter also adapted the same thing, that you can actually run this, um, put your changes in real time, and it's really fast and really efficient, all right? So that's how you can test your code very quickly. So with that, you should know that every time, if you can use this hot button to test it, it's always preferred because the fat, that's the fastest way to run the app, okay? But then if you run this green button, it's gonna restart everything and then to rebuild it. So it's gonna take a little bit longer, all right? So that's kind of the difference, okay? Uh, let me uh, kind of summarize that. So the green button is gonna try to see if we need to rebuild everything and that it may not build the whole thing, but it will check a lot of the things and run everything from beginning. So we will talk about what does that mean in the, uh, in the uh, next lesson. And basically you have to go through the main method to start your code um, and then run every single screen to, you know, um, uh, from scratch. But for the hot load, it always stays in the current screen because right now the app only have one screen, you can't see it, but the hot load just stays where you are right now and it just gives the changes for you to see the changes. All right, so it's always preferred.
right? So let me show you a bigger example. Maybe I can add another text. So I'm just gonna copy this one here, okay? I will just copy the text here, all right? And then I will just add another one here to say that my uh, demo app one, all right? It's a little bit title. So I'm gonna click on this hot load button. As you can see, this one shows up instantly, really fast, all right? And then if I ever use this green button, it will be slower. So I've, I'm gonna change this one, my demo app two. So I'm gonna use the green button and it's gonna run something here and then come back here. So not too bad, not too bad because I already ran this app once, all right? Um, so, but if you never ran this one before, it's gonna go through the whole build process. It will take even longer, right? So that's the two difference um, the difference between the two kind of approaches to run the app, okay? Always use the hot load if that's available, and then sometimes you have to use the green button. So the reason sometimes you need to use the green button, first of all, this one might be buggy, all right? Because um, this one just allows you to quickly refresh your code in this screen, but it does not touch other changes, such as their dependencies, such as some other uh, initialization code you added. So depending on the change you are adding, now, this one might not take effects, the changes, right? Uh, this one works really well with the UI, but not necessarily for all some other code, especially the code about initialization, such as the code you put in the constructor. So you should be very careful on that. Sometimes when you run the hot load, it may not work, okay? And then um, it could be the reason about your code, but it could also be the reason that your, your hot load just cannot take the, the changes. So if you cannot really find any issues, I would suggest that you always fall back because you use this green button to run it again. Sometimes it will help. All right, so that's how you can uh, kind of uh, differentiate why was where where the error is. Okay, so just so you know that the hot green this uh, this hollow button uh, is not always working one hundred percent correctly. Okay, so it depends on the situation. You might need to use the green button. All right, and sometimes there is another situation where you have to click on this red button to stop your app and then rerun everything again. All right, because you already see that when you click on the green button, it just kind of uh, makes the changes and run from the start beginning, but it does not rebuild the whole app completely. However, if I stop the app right here, all right, as you can see the app has been terminated. I, you don't have the hollow button anymore. And this time if you run this app again using the green button, this will actually trigger the rebuild process one more time, as you can see from the very beginning, and then build the new um, app file and then upload it to the phone. So this is a more clean and fresh build uh, from scratch, totally fundamentally. And um, that will give you opportunity to, to kind of test everything uh, more completely. Okay, so this one here, it has an error. So I, I wanna run the app, but then it said I don't have it. If, you know, sufficient storage for my emulator. So if you see this kind of advocate the error message, now what you can do is, you know, you can delete some of this uh, app here. I, I got a lot of a sample app here. Probably I need to increase the storage from, of my uh, virtual device. So I will just uninstall some of the app. Hopefully that works, right? I'm gonna try this button one more time to run the app. Um, but this will take longer, but then sometimes you will need to do this stop terminate way to run it again because you may have new dependencies and for some reason the new dependencies does not shows up and then you want to make sure everything is rebuilt correctly. So um, that's when you need to use this kind of a way to stop the app and rerun it again. All right, so basically to summarize, we have three different ways to run the app. You have the hot load, which is the fattest and the preferred way to go because it lets you development much easier, faster, but sometimes it may not work. And you might need to come back to this green button to start everything the flow again, or stop the app, rerun everything again to take care of some of the dependency issues. All right, so that's how I want to share about the app running. And um, uh, you should also try the same thing on your project.